Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I'm doing another unhaul. So I did an unhaul a couple of months ago, I think, um, that were all books from 2018 that I had read that I was unhauling. I have another unhaul because I have been cleaning up and going through a lot of my stuff, a lot of my books, and trying to like finally part with some books, either ones that I have read and I am not going to be reading again, or ones that I have not read and I have to finally accept that I am not going to read them. <laughs> so I have over 30 books here that I am unhauling, so let's get into them. First up, I have three books from The Lost Years of Merlin by T.A. Barron. So I have The Seven Songs of Merlin, <laughs> The Fires of Merlin and The Mirror of Merlin, and I have not read these, although actually I may have read these a really long time ago when I was younger, and then I picked these up from a used bookstore because I was thinking I was going to reread this series um, because I like the Great Tree of Avalon series by T.A. Barron, which is connected to this but not like technically the same thing. Anyways, I read the first book of this trilogy and did not love it and then decided that I am not going to be reading the rest of it or rereading it. I can't even remember if I've read it before. Um, so I am going to let go of the rest of this series because I don't think that I'm going to be reading it now. Next I have a bind up of His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman, um, which has The Golden Compass, The Subtle Knife, and The Amber Spyglass in it. And this one I read this right around when the first movie for this came out. Um, and like, I, I read this whole book, I mean like it's quite chunky, so like I read the whole trilogy and I enjoyed it, but I have not read it since. It's been a very long time since that movie came out, and I don't think I am ever going to reread it. It is not one that I loved enough that I would want to reread it, and it also wasn't one that was like especially nostalgic to me, so I'm gonna let this one go. Then I have The First 90 Days by Michael D. Watkins, and this is a nonfiction book that is about how important um, the first 90 days in a new job or new position um, can be, and like what kinds of things you have to consider, what you need to accomplish in those first 90 days to be like the most effective. Um, and I read this a couple of years ago, someone recommended it to me, and I thought it was interesting. There are a few like bits of knowledge that I took from it, um, but it also was looking at it from very much I think like a leadership perspective or somebody who is much further along in their career than I am and that doesn't necessarily mean I couldn't learn something from it and I think I did you know learn what I could from it um, but it's also kind of advice that is for somebody who is at a different point in their career than I was when I first read this and also where I am right now. Then I have another nonfiction book which is Buffering Unshared Tales of a Life Fully Loaded by Hannah Hart. Um, who probably everybody knows who Hannah Hart is. She is a YouTuber. Um, and this is like her memoir um, that came out a couple of years ago. Was it 2016? Something like that. And I really like Hannah Hart. I have been watching her channel for a long time and I just really I enjoy her videos. I enjoy her as a person and this was really interesting to learn more about her life and her backstory and kind of her thought process um, throughout her life, but I don't think I'm going to be rereading it. Another book by a YouTuber that I have is Fun Science by Charlie McDonnell. Um, his channel is Charlie is so cool, like probably another one that everybody knows who this is. Um, and this it was based on his Fun Science uh, video series that he was doing, which I really enjoyed, so I wanted to get the book as well. And I have read bits and pieces of this, but it's not the kind of book that you necessarily like read cover to cover. And I really enjoyed this, it's very cute, but I don't think that I am going to be reading much more of it, and I don't really feel like I need to hang on to it. Then I have a couple of books all by the same author, um, which are Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I also have The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury, and Classic Stories 1, which is a collection of short stories all by Ray Bradbury. And I have all of these because there was a point where I um, was going through like a period of time of reading a lot of Ray Bradbury's work because I really love uh, Fahrenheit 451. That was a really um, important and like formative book 
for me in my life and my reading life um, and so I wanted to read more of his work and from what I've read I kind of discovered that as much as I love Fahrenheit 451 I don't necessarily love all of Ray Bradbury's work um, so I am going to be letting these ones go although I gotta say I did enjoy The Illustrated Man more than I liked Something Wicked This Way Comes. This one Something Wicked This Way Comes has a ridiculous ending like the ending I just was like I could not believe it that it was just like that it was just it was just ridiculous but yeah so I'm going to be letting these ones go then I have in the flow passion purpose and the power of mindfulness by Deborah Norris this is a nonfiction book about mindfulness then I have three books from the witch series the first is the power of five the second is the disappearance and the third is finding meridian and these are books that are kind of a mix of just like a regular book and then they also have little like graphic novel inserts in the front and back um that I read when I was probably in like middle school high school age and I forgot that I had these but when I found them just recently I decided to try rereading them to see what it was like and I reread the first one the power of five um and it was cute but these are not really my thing anymore but it was fun to go down memory lane uh, but I did not reread all three of these because I read the first one and it was just like that was fun but like I don't think I can handle the rest of these um so I'm definitely gonna be letting these ones go then I have Waking Merlin and Merlin's Apprentice by Tanya Landman these are uh middle grade books that are about a young girl who finds Merlin and wakes him up and I guess becomes his apprentice. Um, I don't really remember what happens in these because I read them a very long time ago. Then we have A Treasury of Dragon Stories um, by various authors. This is a collection of short stories all about dragons. Uh, when I was younger I was very obsessed with dragons. I still enjoy dragons but not as uh, intensely as I did when I was younger. I collected a lot of dragon stuffed animals and books and stuff very into dragons uh, so I had a lot of dragon related things but I still enjoy dragons but I don't think I'm going to be rereading this book of dragon stories next I have Lord of the Flies by William Golding and this is a classic that most people at least know of if not have read I read this because it's sort of like a dystopian book it discusses themes of like society and what is like an ideal society or a terrible society and that kind of thing um, but I just I just really hated it. Then I have The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson which is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy and this one I was holding on to for a while because I was thinking maybe I would continue the series and then I just decided against it because I just really did not enjoy this book. It was so mediocre to me and very it was very bland, very predictable, very flat. I didn't like any of the characters. I especially thought the character Vin was so poorly written. Um, it was just, there were so many things that I disliked about this that I was like, there's no reason for me to continue reading these like giant books just because they are popular with other people on booktube and this is a series that I have like given myself permission to DNF and to just like let go. <laughs> then I have Sabriel by Garth Nix which is the first book in the Abhorson series um, which I've read the first like three or four books in the series but I have been listening to them on audiobook instead of reading them as physical books um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be continuing the series because I do enjoy the series but I am not in love with it so I'm not sure whether I'm gonna continue or not but if I do it's definitely going to be as audiobooks and I'm not going to be um, continuing to buy the rest of the series so I don't really need the first book. Then I have a couple of books that are all about a TV series, which is Finding Serenity and Serenity Found. Then I also have Firefly Still Flying. So these are all books that are about the TV show Firefly, which only had one season, but it was amazing. And so I think my mom bought me all of these books about Firefly because uh, she knew that I love the TV show. Then I have Circle of Magic Sandry's book by Tamara Pierce. This is the first book in the Circle of Magic series and I love Tamara Pierce. I love all of her Tortal 
books. Um, but Circle of Magic is a different series that does not take place in Tortal, and so I wanted to try out the series. And it just like didn't work for me. I didn't really... I didn't love it, um, so I don't think I'm going to be continuing the series. You can probably hear sirens, so that's great. Next I have The Once and Future King by T.H. White, which is a classic. It is the story of King Arthur, um, and I read this a long time ago, and I mean, it was fine. I didn't love it, but it was like fine to me. But also, like, I'm not a huge fan of Arthurian legends, so I don't know why I've kept it on my shelf if I didn't, like, I don't like Arthur Arthurian legends in general, and this one was really, like, just okay to me, so I'm gonna finally let this one go. <laughs> then I have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and this is one that I know is very popular with a lot of people. I have not read this, but I bought this because it has just, like, this really pretty cover. I think this is, like, the Word Cloud classic edition and I found this at a used bookstore for very little money so I was like oh I'll pick it up because I know Jane Eyre is like a really um popular book and I've had it on my shelf for over a year maybe two years and I've never wanted to pick it up but I read some classics but I don't read a ton of classics and I don't think that this is gonna be one that I get into so I'm gonna let this one go but you know what if I ever decide that I really want to read Jane Eyre I'm sure I can find it again. So this next one I have a lot of opinions about, which is Anthem by Anne Rand, because Anne Rand is just, oh, uh, she's such a ridiculous person. So I got Anthem before I knew who Anne Rand was. Um, and because it, this book was recommended to me by someone that I knew, I just knew that um, this was a book that people said like, oh, if you like dystopian fiction, then you might like Anthem. And so I decided to pick it up. After reading it, I did more research about her and was like, oh my god. Um, so Anne Rand, like, if you don't know who she is, uh, she's an author, she has a lot of books, um, and she wrote Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead um, and some very, like, well-known books. She has a whole philosophy um, that I think is called objectivism that it's just like a really terrible philosophy for life and it's all about like pretty much being only out for yourself, not caring about other people, and like pretty much who cares what happens to other people and only only looking out for yourself. Um, and it just it like tries to disguise itself as being like the most logical and objective like way to live your life but it's really just a way of giving permission to people to be like horrible human beings. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, in a lot of her books she pretty much writes these stories that are to promote this like, it's a novel, but it's promoting the philosophy of objectivism. Um, and this book was so bad on so many levels. Like, one, just because it's, like, promoting that kind of philosophy, but it's also just incredibly poorly written. Like, the writing style is terrible, but the characters are so, so bad. They're like these cardboard cutouts of characters. There's no development. They're so not, they're so two-dimensional. They're also incredibly pretentious and just like so stupid. Anyways, this book, so, so bad. So stupid. But this book was like so terrible that it was almost like fun to hate it because it was so bad. And I actually might read other books by Anne Rand in the future um, because like one, they're kind of fun to hate, like they're so bad that they're so easy to hate, but also because they are books that have been very influential um, in a lot of ways, they're very well known, and there are actually people who live by objectivism and who like love her books, and so to some extent I kind of just have like this morbid curiosity to know like what are they, and I kind and I want to be like well informed. So I may read more of her books in the future, although I will always be like very careful to uh, buy them at used bookstores so that none of the money 
uh, goes back to supporting objectivism. Be Next up I have the book My Secret, uh, which is a collection of posts from Post Secret. I don't know if other people were really into Post Secret in like the early 2000s, but my friends and I were like obsessed with Post Secret and thought it was the coolest thing. If you don't know what it is, it is this website where this guy said that people could send him postcards, like anonymous postcards, with like their deepest darkest secrets and he would post them every Sunday on this website and so you could go and see like pictures of the postcards and the secrets that people had sent in. There was a museum near me actually that had a post-secret exhibit at one point where they displayed a bunch of these different postcards around and they have this book that has um, pictures of some of the postcards. Um, and yeah, so my friends and I were like obsessed with post-secret for a while when we were I don't know, like 15 or something. Um, I don't know if the website is still up or not, but if it is, I'll link it below. Uh, but yeah, so this is just a book of a bunch of those postcards and I don't ever really look at it anymore. I forgot that I even had this. Then I have A Dark History, Vikings, uh, by Martin J. Doherty. And this is a nonfiction book about Vikings. There was a period of time when I was very interested in Vikings and I decided to pick this one up. Um, and I've read like bits and pieces of this but I never really like sat down and read the entire thing and I don't think that I'm going to. I have had this on my shelf for like over two years and have not like really committed to reading this book so I think this one can go as well. And next I have What the Body Remembers by Shauna Singh Baldwin and this is one that I don't really know much about because I don't remember buying this. I uh, did not know that I had it on my bookshelf. I just found it somewhere so I'm not sure if this is even mine um, or if somebody else like gave it to me or just put it with my stuff at some point and then it just kind of got moved with all of my books. I have no idea where this came from. All right then this last one is a series that's heavy. So it is the, oh, what is this called? Inheritance Cycle? Is that what this series is called? Anyways, the first book is Aragon by Christopher Paolini. Is that how you say his name? The, then we also have, no. then we also have Eldest, and then Brisinger, and last up, whoops, Inheritance. Oh, books are falling. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is called The Inheritance Cycle. I always just called it Aragon because that's what the first book was called. So in this series, I have actually only read the first two. So I've read Aragon and Eldest. Um, and the thing is, I enjoyed Aragon, then I read Eldest, and the series just lost me. Eldest, I just remember it being very confusing and it got really weird. And then there was a character that was one of my favorite characters who turns evil out of nowhere. And I was very angry about that. And, you know, I just felt like I felt very betrayed by this book for some reason. As like a teenager, I was like, I have been betrayed and I just like cannot get over it. Um, yeah, so I never continued on with the series. So I have the next two, of course, which are Brisinger and Inheritance. Um, and I keep telling myself, I've, I collected these um, from used bookstores over time because I kept telling myself like, okay, I'm gonna finish the series. I'm gonna read the rest of them. Like, we're gonna do it. And then I never did. And I have had these on my shelves for years, for years never read them. And you know what? I finally decided that I'm gonna just let myself let these books go. And last up, I just have a couple of books that are ones that I had left over from classes from like my undergrad. Um, and I just like, I don't really want them anymore. So the first is Shakespeare's Sonnets edited by Catherine Duncan Jones. So it's just a collection of Shakespeare's sonnets. Um, then I also have Anthology of Classic Myth. Uh, primary Sources in Translation, edited and translated by Stephen M. Trzaskema, R. Scott Smith, and Stephen Brunette. And I have other books of classics um, that 
I like better than this, so I don't really need to hang on to this one. And lastly, I have The Prince by Machiavelli, um, and this one I, this is not the edition that we were supposed to get for school, but this is the one that I got because it was fancy and pretty. Um, but yeah, I read this one and I don't plan to read it again. So those are all of the books that I am unhauling today. I will be donating them to a local used bookstore that supports my local libraries. So just, you know, two birds with one stone, supporting a local used bookstore, supporting my local libraries, all good things. And then as always, Donating these books is also a great excuse to go book shopping at a used bookstore. So I usually at least try to make sure that I donate more books than I buy so I come home with fewer books than I left with. That's the goal. Anyways, as I said, those are all the books that I'm going to be donating. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!